Hi guys! One of the common questions that we get is how did you get Juliana to sleep in her own room? As a newborn, oh. I was very clingy with Juliana. So I wanted her to sleep with me, but because the doctors always said sudden infant death syndrome, we do not recommend that baby sleep with you in the bed. And Benji was totally for that because he wants to make sure from, right the, from the very beginning, beginning yeah right right when she uh that was born. it's mommy and daddy time when it comes to the bed because so, the bed's only for two things so we had our pack and play in um our bedroom which was right next to the bed so it was easy for me to pick her up and feed her when i was breastfeeding at the time and then we got her crib at around four months and i i put her down there um for one night and I couldn't help it. I was like, she's crying, she needs me. So I pick her up and she came back to our room. It took our next visit at the doctor's, I think it was at her five month. Our doctor actually said she's fine if she cries, she needs to learn how to self-soothe. After the doctor's appointment, we were like, okay, then that's fine, she'll stay in the crib. And she was crying and crying. But she's like, remember what the doctor said? And so then I left her there. She stopped crying. It took like 40 minutes. It was a long time. The next day, we did it again. We put her down. She cried and cried. It was 20 minutes. And then the third day, she like cried for five minutes and went to sleep. And then ever since then, it's like, oh. I thought the whole point of this video is to tell them how we did that. Yeah, so you didn't really tell them. Did. You just tell them what happened. That's how we did it. No, there's We let her cry. It. Okay, how? My three things. Okay, what's your? First two are techniques. One, you have to make the crib as familiar a place as her her bed in the room was. So, for example, her pack and play, we always put a certain blanket down and um, Judy get, would even put her down. clothes in there too. So, like, she would have the smell of her uh, scent of in there. Let me go ahead and get her milk. You can finish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Second technique is to be consistent, not only <clears throat> with what time you put her to sleep, but also what time you're gonna feed her uh, and, and also put, uh, give her a bath. But not just the feeding right before the sleep, the feeding before the feeding before the sleep because that's going to determine if she's going to be hungry or not. By the time 9 o'clock rolls around, we can feed her again and she's hungry and she drinks all her mm. milk. The third tip is make sure she's not napping right before her bedtime. Yeah. So we don't let her nap after 6.30. Like that is just well, cutting it close. Well, cat naps. Regardless of anything I say, if Julian is crying, I will go in there and at least check on her whether maybe she's like, you know, Mm -hmm. all tangled up in toys or oh, she's yeah. wet from her diaper. Yeah. I wake up in the middle of the night to um, change her diaper and feed her. So whenever she cries, she needs something in the middle of the night for sure. So I just want to share with you, I'm sure there's other tips and techniques that other parents do. If there is anything you want to share, comment below or post as a video response. That would be really helpful. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you guys in our daily vlogs. Is this focused? Bye. Is it? Oh, it's focused right here. Wait, we're not we're not done. Did she just blow in her face? <laughs> no, she had hair in her eyes. I forgot what the second part was. <laughs> Alright. If you could stop it and then... This is so nice, honey. Look at this. Oh, it's... No, it's not. It's blurry. Why did it blur like that?